MovieWeb.com. Legend tells of a band of noble guardians sworn to vanquish evil and to save our kingdom. But they remain lost in the mists of Garhul, hidden to all but those who believe. Stop! You're gonna give her Damis. But this is my favorite part. You have a soft head, Soren, filled with stories and dreams. There's nothing wrong with dreams. So I want to ask you, because the film kind of plays like, um, so like a Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, but for, you know, it's a children's, mature children's animated 3D film. Why did you want I'm to make out this of here, type of... <laughs> is that a good, good description of the yeah, film? Yeah, write that down for me. <laughs> but Sorry, at this point in your career, what, you know, what, what, was the, what was the choice? What attracted you to do this project? I gotta say, what attracted me really to the project was, um, you know, I was saying it was like, it's a series of, they're downstairs actually, there's these two paintings that um, Grant and, um, and Simon had done to sort of pitch the business to Warner Brothers, saying like, hey, we're this dude, we did Happy Feet, we could do this, you guys have this Legend of the Guardians movie, we could do that too. And I saw those paintings and I was just in my buddy's office and I said, what are those? And he said, oh, it's Legend of the Guardians, it's none of you and it's a family film. And I said, really? It could be cool. It looks cool. <laughs> and so I flipped through the paintings and I was like, man, this is awesome, dude. And I said, what, what's the story? And they're like, well, they don't have a director and blah, blah, blah. And, I, and, they, and he said, you wouldn't be interested in that. And I said, well, let me read the books. So I read the books and I, and I really kind of connected to that sort of Star Warsian, Joseph Campbell and Ian, you know, hero's journey. This super simple, straightforward, good versus evil. The young squire becomes a knight, whatever you want to call it. You know, for me that was like, I was like, gosh, I'd like to just that sort of that journey. I'd really like to try. My talons are upon you. Your days of terrorizing the elf kingdoms are over. Not so fast. You're no match for my army of evil ones. <laughs> well, perhaps, but I am lies of kill. And I've assembled my own army, the Guardians of Gahu! Well, I want to begin by asking you because uh, your character Soren, he's really kind of a dreamer. Yeah. And he's, you know, he believes in the Guardians and, and he really holds his dream to, to uh, this belief. Can you talk a little bit about that and, and, and what he sort of learns from, from going through that? Process. Yeah, well, he so yeah, like I mean, he t he believes that these guardians that he that he's completely obsessed by, you know, he he's he loves these stories that his father tells him, and he absolutely believes that they're real. Whereas his brother, on the other hand, believes that it's just a load of you know hocus pocus nonsense that you know kids get told by their parents to sort of be better people or whatever, you know, better owls, I should say. Um, but you know, ultimately, it's that absolute that that dream and that belief that uh you know that that give him the strength to kind of take on this journey to go and find these guardians and you know that belief you know gets him through it and, and he manages to find the great tree of Hulamir and he manages to find his hero and these guardians that he's that he's dreamt so much about his whole life and they're real you know what's this you leave her be oh a spirited little Taito how touching you and your patch of felt will stay together then. As pickers. Come on. What about my brother? Oh, where's he? Oh, God! Uh. Owlet, that one says you're his brother. There's really sort of a brotherly rivalry going on between mm -hmm. Clud and Soren in the film. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, look, Clud is the, the older brother in a family of owls, and he's constantly trying to garner the attention and respect of his parents. And when his younger brother, Soren, keeps stealing his thunder with his, you know, obvious natural gifts, uh, Clud is none too happy about it. And he really finds sort of a family, finds something with the pure ones. Could you talk about that relationship and how, you know, things sort of go yeah. that way with him? He sort of, uh, for him, surreptitiously sort of stumbles into the world of the pure ones. And then when Naira sort of bestows this belief in him that, look, we believe in the way you want to live your life. Come 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 here, uh, he's easily persuaded because finally he thinks, well, this is how I've always wanted to be perceived and my family sort of, were, he feels like we're putting him down and uh, yeah, here's this chance to sort of show and spread his wings.
tell me a little bit. I love the scene with Soren in the in the water, the mm -hmm. water uh, uh, flight. Can you tell me a little bit about that and designing that scene? Going through the yeah, it was. We took inspiration from surfing. You know, the idea there is, is Soren is in the zone. You know, he's he's doing what we call trusting his gizzard, which is trusting his instincts, which means, you know, he's able to fly with a sense of accuracy and a sense of naturalism that you know, a surfer might do as they're riding a wave. So, you know, we looked at surfing footage, we, we deliberately kind of made it like a horizontal tornado, so it created this kind of cool curve shape that, you know, Soren can kind of ride until eventually flies upside down and he loses it and, and falls to the water. And how do you deal with, um, you know, Zach has such a, a signature style with the fight scenes and, and, you know, the slow motion kind of moves. Mm. How do you co sort of incorporate that into this animation? Well, what, was, what was cool is one of the things Zach did was actually uh, get his stunt team involved and they actually put on like little cardboard claws and, and pretend to be owls. So we got all these stunt videos that, that Damon Carrer and his team did of, uh, you know, humans dressed up as owls fighting and that's how we learned how to, uh, how to sort of animate our owls and, and, and construct some of these battle scenes. And then beyond that, it's just imagination and, you know, sitting around talking about it all the time. What would be cool, talking to Zach, talking amongst ourselves? Uh, well, and the film really has your signature style, your signature fight style that comes through with all the, with the owls fighting. Could you talk about bringing that to this animation 3D style? Well, I mean, I just felt like, you know, one of the things was that um, the birds move really fast and they're flying. And I felt like, you know, this is a cool opportunity to really get after um, some cool, uh, you know, camera work that we can really like really see the action. You know, also because of 3D, one of the things in 3D, people don't realize that um, 3D is difficult when you cut really quickly, right? So if you do like a quick cut sequence in 3D, it's really hard to follow. Um, and so the style of like doing the speed changes and stuff like that really kind of works for 3D because it allows you not to make a cut but also still to see the action. And because actually it's funny, um, high speed photography uh, or when something's moving quickly is difficult also in 3D. So in some ways my sort of high speed photography is kind of really and 3D is a, is a really blends a, to a nice it combination, perfectly. yeah. And tell me about working with Zach. I mean, is he in the recording studio with you, directing you when you're just like laying down the tracks for the voice, or how does he sort of working with yeah, you? Yeah, I mean, his character? big face was on a huge screen <laughs> a lot of the time because uh, we were we were um, often in separate countries, and so you know we had to devise a way of doing it through Skype. So he would be on a screen and I would be on a screen in his office and he'd sometimes he'd be in Australia and I'd be in England. You can't get more extreme time zones than that. Yeah. So he'd be having breakfast while I'd be ready for a pint, you know. <laughs> and uh, so, so it was an interesting dynamic, but I mean one that, you know, someone like Zach, Zach was amazing to sort of control and, and, and not let get in the way. I mean, he, he was completely there in the room, totally present, listening to you know, every little nuance of my voice and directing us through it and discussing with, our, with me as an actor different ideas and it was, it was as though he was in the room all the time. There was Skype relationships, there was video links, there was other people filling in for Zach, all sorts of different ways that we managed to do it over the course of uh, two and a half years. Are, are you talking to him through this time? Is he giving you direction on for when you're recording stuff? Or Oh yeah, yeah. There, there's, there's constantly uh, a dialogue happening and then that also affords you an enormous amount of freedom because unlike shooting a regular film where you're just done in the course of anywhere between four to twelve weeks, this is you know, over the course of years, so you're constantly manipulating, reworking, revoicing, reanimating, and uh, it's a consistent work in process, but one that, you know, is obviously very worthwhile in the end. The Zack Snyder fans are definitely not going to be disappointed because he uses, like you said, his signature stuff and then adds a whole bunch of stuff that I'd never seen before um, that still very much has his stamp on it, but then is going to sort of set the groundwork for you know, uh, future auteurs. It is, a, it is the classic story of sort of good versus evil and, and uh, you know, I, I just never seen anything like it and I've never read anything like it and the fact that these owls are sort of battling each other in the sky like that was just, I mean, when you see it, I mean, when you read it, you, it's one thing. Then when you hear Zach's ideas about it, it's another. And then when you see it, I just couldn't believe what they were able to achieve, you know, through this 3D animation just to make it feel, it was so present, it was just so dramatic to watch these like sequences and Zach's really put his signature style on this, on this animation and it's, you know, I'm just honored to have been a part of it. There were some really scary
scary beast out that way. You can breathe now. <laughs> what are they really doing here? They've built an army. Powerful enough to take over all the Owl Kingdoms. Go tell the Guardians! On his way to finding the legend, he will become one. You too can be a great Guardian. Follow me! Get them! I bet you didn't count on this. <laughs> Hold on! Come on, Sauron. We're not finished yet, boy. <laughs> Be a young owl with a taste for adventure arriving at the tree for the first time. Legend of the Guardians, the Owls of Kahul. Knock, knock. Who's there? Owls. Owls who? Ha, that's right. Owls who? If I have to hear any more of his ridiculous owl jokes... <laughs> it's hilarious.